right. Um, I'm going to go over this uh, market and uh, this opportunity and just explain how it works. So just take a look. All right. Now, before I begin, I just want to explain something. One second. Okay. So I want to explain something. Um, and uh, basically, this will help, especially if you're a white cost style trader, you can get, uh, this will be a tremendous amount of help. So when you're thinking about markets, right, there's only a couple of setups, right, um, that are, you have obviously the breakout, boom, right? So you have the breakout, and market goes up. Here is a reversion, a right, pullback, like a reversion to the mean. Yeah, that's, that's a reversion to the mean. And here, what do you have? You have test of the breakout, right? So you have the breakout, uh, let's put it right here. That's one. Two, the counter trend um, from the high of the rally down to the pullback. And then finally, uh, the test of the breakout. Really, it really just surrounds these three. All right, for all practical purposes, the breakout, the, pull, the start of the pullback and, and the the test of the breakout. So you can make your life a lot easier by just sticking to this, you know, one of these. And typically it's the pullback, which is the test of the breakout. Now, I, there's one other thing I want to mention. So we're going to hone in on the pullback. Okay. Uh, let's call this the pullback, buying the pullback. All right. So I'm going to explain buying the pullback. I'm not going to go into breakout, and I'm not definitely not going to go into the reversion. All right. So here's what you need to know. From a Wyckoff standpoint, when you have a breakout and you have a pullback, you know we call that. I think it was the test of creek or pullback to creek or whatever, right? Just it's basically just a test of the breakout. So that's your first type of pullback. There is one other type of pullback, which is a little bit lower. That goes right here, okay, to the um, to test the start of the move. And that's the second type of pullback. If you're a pullback trader, in my opinion, you must know these two because they are like clockwork every day. Every day this happens. So the pullback number one is test of the breakout, right? Test of the breakout or the breakdown if in, you know, in a down move. And the other one here is, I call it the test of uh, the accumulation brick. Okay. If, if we look at it from the selling side, it would be test of the distribution brick but basically it's just two types of trades pullback and, and this all right now if you want to think of it even further uh, what you have at these um, at this is a potential for a spring so in, in any of these pullback one or pullback two you can have a spring all right so how that works, boom, test, test the breakout, do some shit over here, spring, and then it goes. All right, but it's, it's basically just some sideways action at the test of the breakout. Same at the test of the accumulation area. All right, so for all intensive purposes, for pullback traders in the Wyckoff style, it is my opinion that you need to know two setups. One is test of the breakout, which you all know already, right? And the other one is a little bit lower, which tests the accumulation area. All right, that's, that's, um, now, both of these always have high volume, always. And the reason is because at the turning point here and at the breakout, demand overtakes supply. So that effort to take over supply is always indicated at, by high volume. All right, now that I've given that background, 
The question is, how do you execute? Right? I mean, this can make your life like a hundred times easier. When you just, you know, just look for a pullback to test the breakout or a little bit lower from where the move started, right? And um, at that point, what do you do? What do you do when the market tests the breakout? What do you do? Okay, I'm going to answer that question. This here is the accumulation brick. This is Apple today, all right? You can see that the volume on here is the biggest in the last eight bricks. You can see that it's 25,000 shares, and it's the biggest even in you know the following rally of, of four bricks, okay? So you know that here there was pressure from demand to overtake supply to rally up. This accumulation brick is the second type of um, setup. The first is test of the breakout and the second is test of the accumulation brick, which is nothing more than testing a little bit lower. Now you're probably wondering, what am I doing with this Renko chart? Well, in my opinion, this has just made things so much simpler. Um, and it is the best chart for these types of setups. Test of breakout, test of accumulation break, test of uh, breakdown. And, and, and it combines um, volume with price. And since the Renko bricks are fat, you can just put the volume in them, allowing, you, allowing it to be more of um, like a modern day tape reading chart. Okay, and it's not overly complicated. You know, in other charts, you have a bid ask and you have to read all that shit. So this makes it obvious, 25, bigger than all of this in the background, even bigger than the foreground. All right, and, the, and now you're gonna test it. As it tests, look what happened. Look what happened. Now to explain this, I'm going to say it like uh, like this. What are you looking for on a test? What are you looking for on a test? And that's the question. And the answer is, are the buyers still there? Okay. So the idea is when the market um, goes back to your quote-unquote point of interest or level or demand zone or supply zone or whatever, right? That is where a, a, a move had had happened and you, you don't want to just jump right in. You need to answer the question, are they still there? And now when you go to a lower time frame, the answer is yes, they are still there. Is a big volume, big price action, big bars. So now that you have that confirmation that the buyers are still there as they were there before, they're there now, you want to get in. And how do you get in? A test of the minor creek or test of the minor ice. So basically right here, we're tested, bing, right there, test, right, right there, tested and goes. And you get yourself a nice, you know, nice move. So this is the, the point that I, I want to make all the time, which is, um, and, well, re really taking it back a bit, there are a couple of uh, points to note. One is, what are some easy breezy setups that you can incorporate right away that are foundational. They're not something that is um, something that's new or, you know, they, they've been around forever. The test of the breakout or breakdown has been around forever. As long as there's a breakout, there's a test of a breakout. So it's been around forever. And then the next uh, point is what to do when a test occurs. And the answer is asking the question, are the buyers still there? And if they are, have an entry mechanism, uh, the ability to execute the trade, where to enter, where to exit. And there you go. All right, that's all I wanna to cover today. 
Um, this approach teaches you how to capitalize on a test of a breakout or a test of an accumulation break or a test of any point of interest by taking a look at, in this case, a Renko chart with volume and um, a change of behavior from that area. Or even if it, if it did, wasn't a change of behavior and it had big, big, um, big bars, like those big green bar, boom, then, then it's answering that question. The mistake is something I also want to go over. The mistake that folks make is they put the order there, you know, um, without waiting for confirmation that the buyers are still there. They'll just put the order there. Now, this is a style that, um, I mean, you could do that, but uh, I think it's more susceptible to losses. It has lower risk, but it has um, less probability because sometimes when the breakouts, as you know, or the breakdowns are tested, the test um, fails, meaning the market breaks out, it tests the breakout, it tries to bounce, but it can't, and it continues to go down. And if you just put your order to get in, you'll get in and then you'll get stopped out. So why not wait and see whether the market has the ability to rally after the test of the breakout and then get in? And that's what I'm showing here. All right, take care. Bye.